Ready for your story? Oh, yes. Can I choose the story tonight? Of course you can. What kind of story would you like? I'd like a story set in Africa. Yes! That rules me out, then. I don't know any African stories. Oh, sorry, Boris. It has to be a story about a large animal. Oh, uh, an elephant? A giraffe? No, a rhino. I want to hear a story about Ronald the Rhino. Ah, remember when Ronald built a bridge across the Zambam River using boulders? Oh, yes, that's a good story. And I recall Ronald bashing the biggest boulder ever. It made quite a noise. Oh, oh yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> Do all Ronald stories have boulders in them? Yes. Of course. Let me tell you the best rhino story of all, the story of Ronald and his boulders. My favourite pastime has always been gardening. The warthog loves gobbling up a juicy watermelon or two. <laughs> Natalie the antelope adores ballet. And Ronald the rhino, well, he's into bashing boulders. His friend, the tick bird, wasn't so keen on boulder bashing, but he went along with it because it made Ronald happy. And so it was that every day, come rain or shine, Ronald bashed boulders. He bashed big boulders and medium-sized boulders and small boulders. Until one day... Uh-oh. There were no boulders left. I think you just bashed the last boulder there, Ronald. It can't be. Just think of all the other things we can do now. Go down to the lake for a swim, play a game of fruit ball, have a picnic in the jungle clearing. No, I want to bash something. We must go on an expedition to find new boulders. But, Ronald, there's not a single one left in all of Africa. No. Yes! You will just have to get used to a life without boulders, Ronald. But Ronald was wondering what else he could bash. Here goes! Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Weaverbird. My friend Ronald hadn't seen your nest. <laughs> I really think we should do something else now. We could visit Georgina in her garden. Oh, look, Tick Tick, a mound of earth. What harm could bashing that do? Oh. <laughs> Let's whistle a song instead. That's a ridiculous oh. idea. You don't like my whistling? It's annoying. Annoying? How can you say that after all these years I put up with your pointless boulder bashing? Oh, bashing boulders isn't pointless. It's a very interesting and deeply satisfying activity. No, it is not! Yes, it is! Ha! Ha! The Tick Tick Bird wanted to get.
get as far away from Ronald as possible. And Ronald wanted to get as far away from the Tick Tick Bird as possible. Yeah. Ronald wasn't very happy. And neither was the Tick Tick Bird. He decided to whistle a little tune to cheer himself up. I wonder what Ronald's doing. Maybe I should have gone with him on this expedition to find new boulders. Did you say you were looking for boulders? Yes. Have you seen any? Over there, Rumble Mountain. It's where boulders are made. Tell me more! Every now and then, the volcano erupts, spitting out big boulders. Oh, I'll go and have a look. Cheers, Esmeralda. Be careful. starting to miss the Tick Tick Bird. Oh, I've been a silly rhino. I don't really care about boulders anymore. All I want is to have my friend Tick Tick back. I'll tell Tick Tick we can sing his song together. Whistle a song with you. Oh. <laughs> Ronald and the Tick Tick Bird were very happy to be friends again. That was a brilliant Ronald the Rhino story. Tell a rhino story now. And me? Of course, monkeys. But not tonight. It's Lucy's bedtime now. I want you all to save your rhino stories for me. Yes! But tomorrow evening, I'd like to hear a bear story from Boris. Good night, Lucy. on a sleepover. A sleepover? What's that? I'll stay at my cousin Max's house and sleep on a mattress on the floor in his bedroom. Oh, how exciting. Sounds like you'll have lots of fun. Yes, that's what Max said. But I'm not so sure. Why not, Lucy? Well, how will I go to sleep without a kiss from my mum? Don't worry, Lucy. Things may be a little different in Max's house. But it's bound to be heaps of fun. <laughs> Stop bouncing, Ribbit. Have you got a story for me? You better have. 
Every evening as the sun set behind the great red rock, Joey the kangaroo went to sleep in his mum's pouch. Hey, Joey, bedtime. Oh, Mum, you've been bouncing around all day. You must be tired. No, I'm not. Night, sweetie. Night, Mum. Joey loved sleeping inside his mum's pouch. It was snug and dark and cosy. <coughs> the next day was special. It was Joey's mum's birthday. Ready, son? Forgotten it was my birthday. Yes, but we didn't forget. Thank you, thank you. Hey, the ants, they're stealing Mum's breakfast. <laughs> Don't worry, son. We'll make Mum another brekkie. Oh, and before I forget. Oh, two tickets for Wally the Wombat's Didgeridoo concert tonight. Oh! What about Joey? We can't just leave him here. Can't he sleep in your pouch? The music will be too noisy. Joey! Phoebe! Hi, Joey. Ready to play? Huh? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do some face painting. <laughs> Mum will like that. It's her birthday today. Oh, what presents did she get? Well, she's supposed to be going to a concert tonight, but she can't because she has to stay home and look after me. Hey, why don't you come to my home for a sleepover? That way your mum can go to the concert. Yeah, OK, but we'll, we'll have to check with our mums. The two mums agreed it was a great idea. Joey's mum and dad dropped Joey off at Phoebe's home. What if he doesn't settle? Oh, this is going to be bonza. I'm sure Joey will be just fine, Janet. Let's play boomerangs. While Joey and Phoebe played, Koala Mama cooked dinner. She was making eucalyptus soup, an old koala recipe. Hmm. Kids, dinner's ready. Don't forget to wash your ears before dinner. Don't you mean paws? <laughs> koala bears always wash their ears before dinner. Why don't you wash your ears and your paws? Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I've never had eucalyptus soup before. It's delicious. Race you to the top! <gasps> you sleep up there? Yes, of course. Come on up! Oh, oh kangaroos aren't very good at climbing trees. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. At least it saves me collecting them for breakfast. Mum, Joey and I could sleep in hammocks tonight. Hammocks? What are those? You'll see. This is a great 
great show, but I do hope little Joe is all right. He's never been away from home before. He'll be fine. I bet he's fast asleep by now. My best mate. I like the eucalyptus soup. So did I. Shh. It's getting late, kids. Remember, this is a sleepover, so time for sleep. Night, night. Night, Mum. Night, Joey. <sighs> now everyone else was asleep. Joey felt a little bit lonely. But then he looked up at the sky. Wow, all those stars. The great red rock. Uh, Wally's didgeridoo. Mum, kangaroo. <laughs> Joey's mum and dad had had a fabulous time at the concert, but it was late and time to go home. Thank you, darling. I had a wonderful birthday. Since we're passing by, I think we should just make sure Joey's OK. Good night, sweetie. The next morning, Joey and Phoebe were up early. Mum! 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 Guess what? Mum! Mum! Uh, oh, hello, sweetie. Mum! Mum! I had a great time at Phoebe's. We washed our hands and then our ears as well, because that's what koala bears do. And then we had soup and it was made from eucalyptus Joey, leaves and it was yummy. Joey! I'm glad you had such a great time. Next time, perhaps Phoebe can come here for a sleepover. Yay! Oh, thanks, Mum! Um, I've never been on a sleepover before. Where would I sleep? Well, we've got a sort of mobile bedroom. It's called a pouch. Want to try it? All aboard for the Kangaroo Express! Whee! Oh, wow. uh, oh, it's really comfy! Oh! <laughs> and so Joey and Phoebe set off on a bouncy ride through the outback. It was the best fun they'd ever had. <laughs> Sleepovers do sound like a lot of fun. There's only one problem. What's that? If I go on a sleepover to Max's house, I'll miss my bedtime story. I have an idea. Why don't you tell Max a bedtime story? A sleepover story from Australia. Bonzer! <laughs> Good night, Lucy. Good night, everyone. Sweet dreams. We're having a meeting. A meeting to investigate a complaint. That sounds a bit serious. What sort of complaint? A complaining one. Someone has complained that we don't tell you enough stories about birds. Well, here at the zoo, we like to be fair to everyone. So we've decided to tell you a story about birds. Um, anybody know any? Hold on. What about poor old Seamus? You remember when... Oh, yes. <laughs> and then all that business <laughs> with, with the... <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody please tell me this story? Oh, of course, Lucy. Oh. This is <gasps> the story of Seamus the Stork. It was a beautiful day. A light breeze blew cotton wool clouds across the savannah sky. You take the high cloud and I'll take the low cloud and I'll be a land and a fall. Oh, you 
time is it? Oh, uh, morning, Polly. Hmm? Morning, Razorbird. <gasps> oh, oh, oops. Sorry, girls. Crazy Pelican. Each bird had its own style of flying. The Snip Snip Bird liked to look good in the air, whereas Doris was happy just to be off the ground. Oh, ow, eh, oh, oh, eh. But the master of the skies was Seamus the Stork. Flight zero nine nine -a. Seamus the Stork cruising at 200 meters. Oh, eh. oh, eh. What a sight! It makes you proud to be a bird. He's just showing off. I could fly like that if I wanted to. Don't be silly, dear. Oh. Oh. Breathtaking. Thanks, everyone. Prepare for what the. Are you all right, dear? Uh, oh, oh, sure. Uh, oh, oh, clipped a bush with my wings. Uh, I'm trained to make emergency landings. Uh, best thing is to get airborne again straight away. Bye. <laughs> I just can't seem to get off the ground. You've lost your flying feathers. That's why you can't fly. <laughs> no more aerobatics for you, Seamus. Now then, that isn't very helpful, is it? My flying feathers. My beautiful flying feathers. <laughs> Seamus. <laughs> we have to try and help. There must be a way. I have an idea. Why don't we each lend Seamus one of our feathers? I'm not lending out my beautiful feathers. What a marvellous idea, Doris. Oh, oh that's Thank you all. I'll be off then. Seamus <laughs> began to flap his new feathers. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I've got a wee scheme. Will it hurt? Ach, no, laddie. We'll soon have you airborne again. Right. I want you all to gather twigs and leaves. Never work. The weaver bird used all the twigs and leaves to weave a beautiful kite for Seamus. There we are. Now, where's Seamus? <laughs> It'll never work. Good luck, Seamus. Is someone strong enough to hold the string? Morning, all. Nelson was only too happy to help. With a gentle breeze, Seamus was soon airborne once more. We're cruising at 50 metres, so I suggest you sit back and enjoy the fleet. <laughs> But then, Nelson got itchy. Oh, what a nasty itch that is. Oh, oh, right behind my left ear. Ah, 
that's better. I say, Seamus, that's... Uh-oh. Help! Help! He is a bird. I'm sure he'll be fine. There's only one thing for it, Seamus. You'll have to stay on the ground until your flying feathers have grown back. But that could take ages. Audrey felt sorry for Seamus. To help Seamus, I say we should all stay on the ground until he's better. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good idea. OK, but it'll be very boring. Not if we play a game. Mm. <laughs> the savannah was a strange sight, for not a single bird was in the sky. They were all on the ground, playing a game. Pick up sticks has always been my favourite. You're next, Pauline. My beak isn't very good for this sort of thing. The game went on for a very, very long time. Day turned to dusk, dusk to night, night turned to dawn, and still they played on. Now it's Seamus' turn. <laughs> He's going for the big one at the top. Seamus is out. But he's flying. Oh, right. yeah. My flying feathers, they're back. Seamus had enjoyed the game so much, he hadn't even noticed his feathers had grown back. Yippee! <laughs> Seamus was master of the skies once more. I can fly! I can fly! Me too! <laughs> I like bird stories. Really? Yes, especially when they've got elephants in them. Well, <laughs> it was only a small part. And now, Lucy, it's time you flew up to bed. So come back soon. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, Lucy. Lucy. Sixty-four, sixty-four, sixty-four. When have you been afraid of spiders, Lucy? Since I saw a scary film on TV about big hairy ones that oh, bite. Not all spiders are mean. This one's very friendly. See? <gasps> Get it away from me! Lucy's a scaredy cat! Now, now, everybody's afraid of something. But even the shyest animals overcome their fears. Are you talking about Toby the Tortoise, Nelson? Oh, please tell me that story, Nelson. Hmm. Toby was so scared of thunderstorms. And those happen a lot in Africa. Of course, none of the animals like thunderstorms very much. So when a dark cloud covered the sky, everyone ran for cover. But Toby couldn't run fast enough. Oh no! Leave me alone, thunderstorm! It was the sound of the thunder that really frightened Toby. He decided he would stay inside his shell forever, because he never wanted to hear another thunderstorm again. Never! Never! Never!
The next morning, the sun rose over the savannah, and all the animals came out from their shelters. Oh, that was a wild storm last night. I didn't mind. It's made everything smell really fresh now. Good morning, Toby. Come out and play with us. Toby, are you in there? Of course he's in there. Tortoises don't leave their shells. So, why is he ignoring us? Have we done something to make him cross? As Doris and Kevin wondered why Toby's shell was so silent and still, I happened to amble past. Morning all, what's new? Toby won't come out of his shell. We think he might be cross with us. <laughs> Nonsense. He's just sleeping in and needs a wake-up call. There. He must be awake now. No sign of it. Uh... As we puzzled over Toby's shell, Reginald the lion walked up. <laughs> Why are you all staring at Toby? Have you nothing better to do? He won't come out of his shell, Reginald. I thought he was asleep. We thought he was cross with us. <laughs> He's just being lazy and needs a good kickstart. <laughs> um, Reginald, I don't think it's working. Toby hasn't come out. How annoying. As we puzzled over Toby's shell again, giggles and tickles ran up to us. Uh, I bet we know what's wrong with Toby. He's bored. All we have to do is play with him and he'll come out. Hey. Hey, stop mocking about. Toby's not a toy. <laughs> That's enough of that. Friends don't throw each other around like that. Sorry, Toby. That was a silly thing for us to do. It certainly didn't help. Toby is still in his shell. Maybe Toby is ill. Oh, Kevin, you might be right. Let's take Toby to Uncle Gordon. He'll sort Toby out. So we took Toby to Dr. Gordon Gorilla, who was as busy as ever. Next. Always remember to look before you leap. Next. Uh, just as I suspected, you have a tummy ache. <laughs> Toby's the patient today, Dr. Gordon. He won't come out of his shell. We thought he was cross with us. I thought he was sleeping. I thought he was being lazy. And we thought he was bored. Hmm, let me see. Uh, the problem is obvious. Really, Doctor? Is it serious? Oh, no. Toby is as fit as a fiddle. Although he does have something that is troubling him, only he can see what it is. Dr. Gordon left everyone feeling oh. very confused. How could we help Toby if he wouldn't tell us what was wrong? Then Doris came up with a bright idea. I know. Let's take Toby to see Audrey the Agony Aunt. Oh, yeah. She's the best at helping us with our troubles. When we arrived at Audrey's nest, Doris quickly explained the problem to her. Dr. Gordon said that Toby has troubles which only he knows, and as you are the best at trouble solving, we came to you. Please, can you help get Toby out of his shell, Audrey? I'll do my best, Kevin. Now, off you go, oh. all of you. I need to talk to Toby alone. Then Audrey leaned down to look at the dark hole inside Toby's shell. Tell me, Toby, what has frightened you? How did you know I was frightened? I'm very good at my job. So, what was it? Was it last night's thunderstorm? Well, how did you know? I know thunder frightens almost everybody. It used to scare me, and I'd bury my head in the sand whenever a storm broke out. Used to scare you? 
Doesn't it anymore? No, because I found a way to get rid of my fear. Do you want to know how? Oh, yes, please. It's the sound of thunder that scared me the most, so I decided to block it out with these coconut ear protectors. Try these seashells on for size. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. What? What? Toby and Audrey couldn't hear each other with their ear protectors on, but they did see an angry thundercloud passing overhead. Oh, no, not again. Toby waited nervously for the thunder sound that follows lightning, but to his surprise, the sound didn't arrive. Audrey, there's no thunder. Thanks to their ear protectors, Toby and Audrey couldn't hear the thunder, so they weren't afraid of the storm. Want to watch the lightning with me and Audrey? Is that okay with you, Nelson? Absolutely. This thunderstorm is amazing. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Afraid of thunder isn't the same as being afraid of spiders. Isn't it? Ear protectors won't stop them from biting me. <gasps> this one hasn't bitten me. Go on, Lucy. Oh, oh, it's soft and furry. <laughs> it's tickling me. Hey, tickling's my job. Good night, Mr. Spider. Good night, everybody. Good night, Lucy. Oh, hello, Lucy. <laughs> uh, we're learning some new exercises from our guest. This is Cassandra, Lucy. Hello, I'm Lucy. Oh. Uh -huh. A great pleasure to meet you, Lucy. <laughs> I've never seen anyone say hello like that before. Not everyone says hello in the same way, you know. And sometimes that comes as a bit of a shock. <laughs> it suddenly did for my friend Horace the Hare. Sounds like a story. Tell us, Cassandra. <laughs> as you wish. Far away in the east, in the Sohai Mountains, the sun was shining, and Baba the Panda had set off on his morning walk. Baba was very friendly and always greeted everyone in traditional panda style with a nice big hug. Bow Bow, say hello to Gertie the goat. Hey, cozy. <laughs> everyone loved Bow Bow and we all looked forward to his morning hugs. He was a very popular panda. Morning, Bow Bow. Bow Bow give Huggy to Cassandra the Crane. Ah. But there was one creature Bow Bow had not yet got to know properly. Horace the Hare. Horace always seemed too busy to say hello to Bow Bow. <laughs> oh yes, such delicate flowers. Just a thing for my lunch table. Bow Bow give Horace the Hare traditional panda greeting. Huggy! Ah! Oh. Huggy! Where'd he go? So sorry, Bow Bow. Can't stop. Some other time, Hatch. Terrible habit. Bye! 
Oh, Horace, too busy for Baba Hug. But the truth was, Horace was not too busy. He was nervous. Horace had never been hugged before. What if Baba's paws crush me? I'd better stay out of his way. But Baba was a very friendly panda and wanted everyone to enjoy his hugs. So he decided to keep a special lookout for Horace. <laughs> Forever, and one day Bow Bow got luckier. Oh, lovely! Greetings, Horace. Ouchie! Horace hurt? Horace need nice, big, soft Bow Bow huggy. What? What? No, no, I'm fine, really, Bow Bow. It, it was nothing. Huggy make it all better for Horace. <laughs> Horace, no want Huggy? Indeed. Horace, no want Huggy. No Huggy? No Huggy. Pandas like hugs. No offence, Baba, but hares don't like hugs. Hare no like hug. Maybe goat no like hug. Maybe crane no like hug. No one like Bow Bow Hug. Bow Bow Hug only Bow Bow. So the next day, Bow Bow did things differently. Good day. <laughs> Time for my favourite bit of the day. <laughs> Morning, Bow Bow. Oh. Greetings, Gertie. Bell, over here, you forgot my hug. Ah, here comes my hug. Good morning, Baba. Greetings, Cassandra. Hug time, Baba. Baba, did I say something wrong? Did you see that, Gertie? Yeah, it did the same thing to me. No big cosy hug. Bow Bow, say greetings. Ah, oh, yes. Good morning, Bow Bow. Marvellous, marvellous. <laughs> ah, did you see that? <sighs> oh, why the long faces? It's Bow Bow. He stopped hugging. Ha, <laughs> yes. Isn't that great? It, it isn't. Of Bow Bow's hugs. You like being hugged? What's there to like? You get this warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Yeah. And it's so cosy. Bow Bow's hugs are the best bit of my day. Whatever could have made him stop? <gasps> oh dear. Horace realised that he had a lot to learn about hugs. So he decided to go and see the wise old carp who lived in Mirror Lake. <coughs> Greetings. Who come seeking advice from Confusers the Wise? It's me, Horace. I've got a problem. Uh, no problem without answer from Confusers. Explain. It's, um, it's, it's like this. I've upset Bow Bow because I don't want to be hugged, but now he won't hug anyone and everyone's fed up. What should I do? Confuse us, say. If Horace the Hare no want Bow Bow's gift of hug, then he should return it. Oh, great. Very helpful. Uh, thank you, Confusers. Horace had no idea what Confusers meant, but he was determined to make things right for the other animals. 
Greetings, Horace. I'm sorry I told you to stop hugging, Bow Bow. Bow Bow sorry too. Bow Bow no want to scare Horace. Bow Bow no want scare no one. Well, the thing is, I've never actually had a hug before. I don't know what hugs are like. Bow Bow think hug nice. <laughs> Cry, Bow Bow, I can't bear it. Look, there must be something I can do to cheer you up. If you don't want gift of hug, you should return it. <laughs> there, there, Bow Bow. Ooh, soft and warm. Oh, I'm hugging. Hugging feels good. Huggy? Horace, make hug for Bow Bow. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Is this a private hug, or can anyone join in? Bow Bow, give traditional panda greeting to everyone. Wow. Horace had finally found that warm, fuzzy feeling, and learned that hugs from friends are nice to give and to receive. I love hugs. Especially just before bedtime, eh, Lucy? Thanks, Cassandra. Good night, Lucy. Night, night, everyone. Night, night, Lucy. Someone here to see you. Oh, who is it? It's a surprise visitor. You have to guess who it is. First, close your eyes. And now, have a feel. <laughs> Little ears. <laughs> A woolly coat. <laughs> Big toe. Oh, hey, stop that. You're tickling me. I recognise that voice. It's Leopoldo the Llama. <laughs> <laughs> well guessed, Lucy. Have you come with a story, Leopoldo? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Can we hear it, then? This is a story... All about Tallulah the Toucan. Tallulah was always up early, and every morning she would do exactly the same things. First, she'd croak a cracking good croak. Crocky, crocky, croak! Then she'd preen her silky soft feathers. <laughs> and finally, she'd pick a pretty red flower. Now Tallulah was ready for a busy day. Hi, Tallulah! Oh, hello, Atta. Hello, Jazz. Hello, Leopoldo. What are you making today, Tallulah? It's a surprise. Why don't you come back tomorrow when the surprise is ready? Come on, let's play Jumping in the Jungle. Yeah! See you tomorrow, Tallulah. <laughs> Bye. Tallulah was busy all day long. And when night fell, she covered the surprise with a blanket of leaves. Oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. I hope my friends will like the surprise. <sighs> But the next morning, crook a crap. <laughs> Just as Tallulah was about to pick a pretty red flower, oh, my flower! Oh no! 
What am I going to do without my red flower? Today will be a disaster. Cholula decided to hide in her nest. Crow, okay, crow. Cholula! Oh. Huh? I'm not coming out today. But what about the surprise? Crow, okay, crow. What's the matter, Tallulah? Are you not feeling well? Oh, I haven't got a red flower. Never mind. You look almost as nice without your red flower. Come on, let's go and see this surprise. No, no, no. I can't possibly go without my red flower. I suppose we could go looking for a flower. Mm. So that's what we did. Crokey crow. Tallulah! Look what we found! Just pick the one you like best. Okay, she's just being silly now. Uh, the seed of the red jingle jangle flower. We can grow a flower for Tallulah. Now we wait. But Jazz didn't feel like waiting. Maybe we should just shake Tallulah out of her tree. Uh, Jazz, why don't you and Leopoldo go for a dip in the river while I wait for the seed to grow? All right. Yes, a dip in the river. Why not? Come on, Leopoldo. Now only Adam was left with Tallulah. Come out without your red flower? Toucans never go out without their flower. Oh. Armadillos never climb trees. Really? Never? If I climb your tree, will you come out without your red flower? Mm. Okay. We 
windmills were the most marvellous surprise ever. Hey, Leopoldo, <laughs> what's happened to your hair? <laughs> 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 Lucy! <laughs> well, Leopoldo, do you like your flats? Maybe a change of hairdo isn't such a bad idea. We all need to get used to changes every now and then. Yes! <laughs> but one thing never changes. What's that? After story time comes bedtime. Oh, good night, Lucy. Good night, Leopoldo. And thank you for the story. 